In this lecture, we will see the overview of the fundamentals of Agile software development. Now that you are a certified ISTQB tester, let's explore what is the difference between a traditional and an Agile project. First of all, a tester on an Agile project will work differently than one working on a traditional project. The main difference is in traditional development methodologies. The sequence of the phases in which the project is developed is linear, whereas in Agile, it is iterative. To understand this point, I will explain a linear model and an iterative model. Let's first see the linear model, or sometime called as an incremental model. The V model is the example of the incremental model. In this model, first, we have a user requirement, which is provided by the customer. Then, from the user requirement, we write the system requirement. Once the system requirement is in place, we will write the global design and the detailed design. And once the design is done, we will start implementing the software. These are the steps in this development activity. You get the user requirement, create the system requirement, then develop the global and detailed design, and finally, you implement the code. Now, once the implementation is over, the software is ready. Then we perform a component testing on it. Once that is done, we perform integration testing. After integration, we will do system testing. And finally, the acceptance testing. After the software passes through all of these tests, it will be ready for the operational system's use. As you can see, this development model looks exactly like a V, which is where its name came from. Now, how is this model more advantageous than the sequential model? The advantage is that all these testing activities are parallel to the development activities. Let's take a look. These are the development activities, and these are the testing activities. Once you have the user requirement, even if you have not done any of the below steps, you can start preparing test cases from the requirement for the acceptance testing. Similarly, when you're in the system requirement stage, you can start preparing for the system test. Since you have the requirements, you can start writing the test cases. Once the software comes, you can execute them. The process is happening parallelly. When the development activity starts, the testing activities can also start at the same time. Now, let's move on to the design phase. Once you have the design, you know how the components are going to interact. What are the interfaces between them? So, once you know all of that, you can start to prepare test cases for the integration testing. And finally, when you have the implemented code, you can start component testing. This is how the development models function. All the development activities on the left correspond with the testing activities on the right. Here, you will start getting feedback as early as possible. Once you have the user requirement, the testing will begin. Let's see the iterative development model. An example is an agile model. This is the most popular model in the industry right now. Suppose you have a software that you need to implement in three weeks, and it has 15 requirements. If you use the agile model, then this is how it will work. The agile model will have three different phases. Each phase will be for one week. Phase one, is for the first week. Phase two is for the second week, and phase three will show the third week. Since we have to complete the project in three weeks, the time has been divided in this way. Now, we have 15 requirements, so we decide to develop five requirements in phase one, five in phase two, and five in phase three. At the end of three weeks, we will have 15 implemented requirements. Why are we doing this in phases? Because we analyze and test and develop the first five requirements, then send it to the customer for feedback. If there are any changes to be made in the process, we find out about it in the first phase. 
Then, as per the feedback, we can implement that in phase two. This is the biggest advantage of the agile method. You get the customer's feedback from the earliest stage. And in every stage, when you release the software to the customer, it will be fully working. At the end of phase one, you have five requirements in the working stage. But at the end of phase two, you won't be releasing just five requirements to the customer for feedback. You will be releasing 10 requirements in the working stage. From phase one and two, and at the end of phase three, of course, you should have a complete working software that will fulfill all 15 requirements fulfilled. This is how the Agile method works. Each phase has define, develop, build, test, and implementation stage. So we can see that live implementation of the software will happen in all of the phases. We are repeating the steps in each one, and this is why it is called an iterative development model. Now we know how sequential and agile models work. Since the Agile model is highly iterative, testers must understand the value and principles that underpin Agile projects and how testers are an integral part of a whole team approach together with developers and business representatives. The members in an Agile project communicate with each other early and frequently, which helps with removing defects early and developing a quality product. This is another picture which illustrates the iterative Agile sequence. As you can see here, the analysis design code and test phases are repeated again and again. And with the picture, I end this lecture here.